So the one thing I wanted to focus on for my PL well was deconstructing some lit literary themes which I found in my book and rebuilding them as MTX achievements. So you just kind of have to focus on that word deconstructing because that's a lot of what my visual is going to be about. Many were saddened by Pluto's demotion to a dwarf planet. In the book How I Killed Pluto and Why It Had It Coming, Celtic astronomer Mike Brown conveys to us the tale of one man out to discover the next new planet beyond Pluto. As he does so, he discovers multiple objects lingering outside of our solar system, some of them slightly larger than Pluto, many of them composed of the same material. Realizing that these wandering objects needed a categorization, Mike decides to boot Pluto out of our solar system and into a new family known as the Kuiper Belt. From their decision rose, from his decision, rose copious amounts of objections by both civilians and other professionals in the field as well. And when the final decision was made, a large part of it was relied on how one defined a planet. And this is exactly what occurred during the discussion held by the IAU a redefinition of what we believed to be a planet. When our MPX class was dispelled in our house, I was forced to update my thinking about art and reconsider the contribution of the arts to society. I needed to reflect and redefine the influence of contemporary artwork in the modern age. This was in order to combat preconceived notions of ignorant bias that held against art prior to going to Spalding Art House and learning about, more about it. So before I want to kick this PUL off with how the further understanding of a subject was able to help triumph over the previous preconceived bias and prejudice which I held against it. Prior to going to Spotting Art House, I felt that art was a very trivial pursuit. Yes, as a hobby, it's okay, but as a profession, it you know it just shouldn't be one because it's not. I just thought it was basically useless, which is kind of funny because I am an artist, so. But I don't, I try to focus, I try not to focus too hard on art. So, but however, when we went to Spalding Art House, I saw that there was this, some sort of validated purpose in the practice of the arts. One of the exhibits there depicted various living conditions with the, which the people of Nikiki inhabited. Starting from the affluence and the luxury of the mansion, which sit right next to Spalding Art House, and going all the way down to, the, to a location right by the, to a location right by the highway, which has become a permanent residence for our homeless and covering a range of living conditions in between. And covering a range of living conditions in between. By decreasing the by decreasing the living conditions of the inhabitants of Nikiki, the artist was able to show us how how the how people are able to really judge and perceive, <coughs> uh, judge and perceive uh, someone's socioeconomic status based on the place which they occupy. If you would take an individual piece from this exhibit, it would be praised for the skill displayed by the artist. However, if you were to take and devour in the entire exhibit, you would see that you would be praising yourself for the skill and the intellect demonstrated by the artist and how they're able to communicate using this sort of medium through art. Such is this influential and expansive nature between visual intelligence and communication. So it was really interesting because this exhibit was able to bring to light topics or issues that we have sewn into the socioeconomic realities of our society. And really it is proof to it really is a testament to how art is able to extend into multiple aspects of our society, whether it be politically, socially, culturally, economically, and politically. In the book, Billions and Billions, the author Carl Sagan 
highlights upon the looming and dire consequences of our civilization's promotion of fossil fuel burning and the unjust and corrupt practices which occur as a result of the lethal engagement between both politics and industry. The industrial beast scarfs down upon feasts of coal and natural resources, its feces the carbon dioxide which chokes this humble planet. Due to this, the educated vocalizations of scientists globally are heard by very few. However, recently, this issue has been growing in prominence, and our people are paying more attention to how their actions affect the planet. This was achieved through the noble work of the scientist, who, with inarguable evidence, has brought a shadowed issue into light. Science will always win, since it is always the truth. Science provided researchers with copious amounts of evidence to back up their panic's claims. Much in the same way, that is when one writes a thesis, within the paragraphs of the essay, the topics which, are which were introduced within the thesis have a high concentration of facts and evidence in them to support any given point or argument. So the second scale which I developed during the course of the Revolutionary War project as well as the Civil War project was, be, was further understanding of the concept of a thesis and the element of organization and structure which it incorporates into a paper. Prior to doing both of these projects, I was dumbfounded by the concept of a thesis. All of my sta friends who took standard classes uh, would always use it when they're talking about their homework. However, I was slightly confused as to how to properly use it. However, I soon began to realize that a thesis serves to organize as well as introduce the context of, the pa of your paper as well as how you may feel about it. For example, in my persuasive essay on how Kate Perry, um, an American revolution, uh, a heroine of the, Mer Amer of the American Revolution, was able to display bravery and leadership during the, re the revolution, I needed to use the thesis to highlight the points which I wanted to clarify. And then in the body of my, in the body of my essay, I would use my paragraphs to be highly concentrated with facts, evidence, and support in order to boost my claims and sort of very really support my claims. So I did the same thing for my argumentative essay on the telegraph when I needed to explain how I felt, why, how and why I felt that the evolution of technology has been beneficial to our society. So now that I'm able to use thesis thesis in my papers, I know that instead of that my work will be more structured rather than being constituted of flim, flimsy, this flimsy constitution of poorly written paragraphs. And this is my thesis for the uh, persuasive essay we had to write about our American revolution, uh, the our individual from the American revolution. In the book Origins, Neil deGrasse Tyson elaborates upon the clever methods astronomers incorporate into their study of cosmic bodies. The challenge which astronomy poses to the most develop of, developed of minds is the absence of physical experimentation. Therefore, astronomers need to apply terrestrial scientific fundamentals to find out what's out there. Tyson elaborates on current methods astronomers, astronomers use to discover what elements can constitute a planet. Each element of the periodic table reflects light differently. By studying the way which each cosmic object reflects light, astronomers are able to, are able to determine which known elements they are composed of. Applying what we know here to find out what's out there. This is similar to how our class was given the opportunity to apply our classwork physics to the creation of a circuit for the electric light. So the third scale which I would like to elaborate upon is how we're using classroom concepts and applying them to realistic problem solving. So be the previously daunting task of creating an electric circuit was simplified due to the weeks of castle work which we, did, which we did in Mr. Hines' class. However, when we got our kit and we were allowed to start tinkering with the creation of the circuit, the tedious phrase of creating the schematics and also the kind of boring phrase of creating the schematics for our circuit 
preceded our the fa the phase where we got to put all of our hassle work into the creation of our circuit. So even though our iPad our iPad held an abundance of resources, I still felt it very difficult to find the correct schematic or specific schematic to base our schematic upon because you know the schematics we saw online they were very different to our schematics since they were for different in different kits so it was I didn't want to base one off of an incorrect schematic because you know our motors we only got one shot with them I didn't want to screw up and I'm pretty sure my group didn't want to screw up either however with the assistance of Mr. Hines and my highly intelligent groups group mates we were able to and we were able to create a schematic worthy of Dr. Hines' approval. And after a short period of celebration between Justin, Mahina, and Brianna and I, we were able to begin at, to tinker with our circuit and create it. And two days later, or two days later in Mr. Hines' time, so like uh, pretty much Mr. Hines' period, Mr. Hines' period, and then we had it, we were interrupted by Ms. Davis' period. So it was more like a week. <laughs> so, or a week later, to be more precise, we were able to get our circuit working, and I was very proud of what our group accomplished because prior to doing this, I never would have believed within myself the ability to have the skills and the knowledge to create this sort of thing as well, and I am also very grateful for my group mates because they really helped, they assisted in my learning of these concepts. In the book, A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Arthur, our protagonist, Arthur Dent, is spirited away from the Earth by his friend, Ford Prefect, who is actually an alien, just as it is destroyed in order to clear a path for an intergalactic highway. Arthur is soon met with ordeals of interstellar proportions, as he struggles to adapt to the bizarre characters which he meets, who are the inhabitants of the cosmos. His problems that he faces in outer space range from having missiles fired at him from the fabled Margarita, the planet where planets are created, to being tossed into the vacuum of space from a Volvan starship along with his friend, Ford Prefect. Arthur is forced to assimilate himself into this odd environment, as he saves him and his friend from imminent peril through either his cunning or through sheer luck. Comparable to how I, a student who trembled under the spotlight, was catapulted into the a theatrical environment and forced to navigate this strange new terrain using skill and knowledge. So the fourth skill which I gained through the course of this semester was being able to adapt to any given academic environment. And this is displayed through my begrudging assimilation into the, into the theatrical field during our for our Revolutionary War plays. So I had never found it within myself with, I've never found within myself the talent or the courage to voice my opinions with conviction and vigor. How was I able to hold it, even hold a candle to the effervescent, to the effervescent ways of the theater kids in our MPS class? So I was, this really confused me and I felt really, you know, I felt I floundered in the subject because yes, while my verbal capabilities and oratory skills had far outgrown that of the freshman the year prior who would who was very timid and who would refuse to raise up her voice a tone higher than what she had accustomed herself to. I still found myself struggling to adapt to this new way of learning. You know, speeches and speeches and presentations are not the same thing as performances. I floundered in the face of applied emotion and I choked in the dynamics of blocking and blocking and dialogue. However, through however, through constant or repetitive recitations within my really reclusive locations such as my room where no one could hear me, I was able to allow emotion to permeate into my words, which would then translate into performance, into power and dominance on the night of the performance on the stage. So, but however, the biggest contribution to the sudden, you know, growth was the advice and assistance we got 
from Mr. Watt's advanced acting class. They were really excellent, excellent teachers, and they would chide us whenever they saw us do a mistake, and we would also receive appropriate praising if they if we proved we were able to learn and apply. So through their help, I was able to enhance my projection capabilities. I had no one strained to hear me on the night of the performance as I voiced and monologues and dialogues with permission and vigor. In Carl Sagan's The Pale Blue Dot, the famous astronomer elaborates on the intrepid journey undertaken by Voyager 2. One that denotes fear of the unknown and promotes curiosity and wonder instilled in a new age. Knowing that it would be sent out into interstellar space, Voyager 2 was groomed to perfection by both the astronomers and the engineers of the 1970s. However, despite the robotic intelligence of this artificial explorer, it was still greatly dependent on the aid of our brightest minds on Earth. This is why your two left Saturn, the scan platform which would point at and record every aspect of the Saturn system, jammed and stopped. This was an issue due to the lack of lubrication. So in response, engineers decided to switch the heating and cooling systems of Voyager. Believing that the varying temperatures within the machine would cause the scan platform's material to expand and contract, which would then restart the system. They found this method to be successful. Just as Voyager, despite its program's intelligence, was still greatly dependent on human ingenuity to solve its issues, so was science dependent on math. Many aspects of scientific phenomena can be easily explained through complex mathematical systems which we can use to understand and predict further phenomena. Math and science cooperate, and together, in a beautiful symbiotic relationship, enforce the natural laws which govern the known world. With science, Math emboldens strings of equations into the movement of some of the greatest co of the cosmic objects. Acting as a universal language, math can describe the most minute details of motion as it does through the kinematic equations. So finally, to conclude the scale L, I would like to follow up all my scales with a scale which I felt has been the most satisfactory as well as beneficial. And this is being able to translate scientific functions into mathematical systems. So, or actually to say, or in other words, being able to describe scientific functions through mathematics. So what a lot of the work we did in Dr. Hines' class was based on the kinematic equations. And these, so pretty much the sub, the Fundamentals of motion are subject to four equations understood as the kinematic equation. What these equations do is they usually describe the conditions present or the forces which are imposed upon an object in motion. So a lot of what we would do, what work we would do with the kinematic equations was whiteboard problems. And we would be given the hypothetical movement of an object at different stages of its movement and then we would be forced to use these kinematic, however, one, um, one aspect of the motion was missing. So we would probably have to solve for how fast it was going, velocity, or how long it took to slow down, which is um, time, and, or the rate of acceleration, etc. So what we would do was we would get the kinematic equations, get our, get the, take all of what we knew about the motion of the object and plug them into the kinematic equations, basic algebra would then ensue and we would find our missing variable. We did a lot of projects based on these kinematic equations and the catapult which we built to display our knowledge of projectile motion was structured upon these equations. So, you know, the thing about this is algebra has been a subject that I struggled with for a long time because I felt that I wasn't good at math or that I was not you know, I was kind of, I don't want to say stupid, but stupid in the STEM fields, even though I really liked it. And, you know, it's just kind of made me feel hopeless. However, when I realized that my problem wasn't with mathematics, it was the lack of its appliance to certain things. Because 
I realized that last year in geometry, we had to use a lot of algebraic functions to solve for certain geo to solve geometric problems. However, when I was applying the algebraic functions, I realized, hey, this is easier. So I think so now it's just really a matter of being able to apply science, um, math to where it inarguably belongs in science. So it just just being able to conquer this obstacle and being able to kind of pinpoint why I wasn't able to do certain things and why and find out that you know I didn't have that much of a problem with mathematics it's just how it was being taught because math is usually in standard it's taught separate from science it just made me feel really empowered because it's because it tells you about what you can it tells you that you're the leader of your own learning as is the motto of MPS because you know you can do all that you want but you can achieve more but you just have to know a lot about yourself and how you're able to function in certain situations so that's why I felt this was the most satisfactory skill and to conclude this POL Thank you, Ms. Davis, and thank you, Mr. Hines, if you're watching this, for a wonderful semester, as well as thank you for all my peers for being amazing peers. You guys are all really smart and awesome. And thank you for just an overall great semester. Rest of you, Leo. Couple questions? Oh yeah, questions, sorry. Do you want me to clarify certain um, because I know that some connections between the book and the uh, skills were kind of iffy. So, like, if you want me to clarify that. I, know um, I just thought, like, if, I don't know. Um, like, all of your books were about, like, astronomy. Did you do that specifically for the POL? Or do you just read, like, a lot of astronomy books? I guess it's mostly in astronomy. Well, since we got this free reading project, or not, the, not free reading, but, like, the, the reading project, it kind of, made me have to read about things which interest me. So I said, oh, why not tackle the nonfiction books? Because that's probably going to be the hardest to do. So I just chose a subject which really interested me. And the tackling the nonfiction just made it a lot easier. And also, I just, yeah, I'm just, just a general interest in astronomy. Yeah, Leo? Um, how did you manage your time with, like, writing that whole script and then making the amazing art and then making the thing and then memorizing and uh -huh. the thing about this is I didn't because this POL was actually new so um, there's actually a good explanation for this well like half of it is time management half of them are circumstances that like I can't control because we had this event over sorry do you want me to go into depth about that or no you don't need to if it's okay. private. Well, we had this thing for tennis, and then uh -huh. it was really, really late. And then it took, like, all day. And then I had to do, I remember I had to do the POL, and my computer's kind of slow, or, like, our computer, our family computer's kind of slow. So it took a long time to upload the clips and then do the editing. So, yeah, I kind of lost a lot of sleep because of this. But it made me realize, that, like, oh, I got to manage my time better when I'm doing big projects like these. So... No, I didn't really manage my time well. But it's a good lesson and good good evidence to use against myself. Yeah. Ms. Davis said that we're allowed to comment and I really like your skill about the how you were more interested in science and that way you were more interested in math because of the way we learned it. Because my sister really doesn't like science but she loves math, so I was just thinking like if she had learned it this way, would she have been more into science? Um, so I noticed, like, when we first got this assignment, Ms. Davis gave us a link to an example PLL, and it was yours. And, uh, last year you also did artwork, so, like, what enticed you to, like, put your artwork into a PLL? Well, because I think a lot of what I want to do with my PLLs is make it visual, and the only way I can actually make it, like, acceptably visual without always using images from the internet is through artwork and like I it just happens that I always like keep art as like um 
a really just skill to use for work such as these because I'm not actually going to, I'm not actually that interested in art, but like, I just, something handy to pull out, so.